In an interview given in 2014, Daniel Liebeskin stated, Architecture is not just an intellectual or abstract exercise, it is an emotional experience, just as music is. When you leave a building, it is like leaving a piece of music, it is still in you and still with you. Liebeskin believes that the musical training he received in his youth influenced his move to architecture. Indeed, he has said that the architect should listen to the sound of a place. While I share Liebeskin's view that architecture is an emotional experience, I'm unable to fully appreciate the importance he places on listening to a space. I developed a severe hearing loss in my 20s, and while I can differentiate between a good acoustic and a poor one, the finer subtleties of resonance are no longer available to me. Thus, while many site-specific composers explore the acoustical properties of a space, my approach is quite different. It is not my aim to showcase the acoustics of a site, but rather to create a musical work that, when performed in situ, complements the architect's aesthetic and enhances the public's engagement with the space. As my hearing declined, my sense of sight heightened, and my interest in the visual arts led to the development of a compositional approach informed by a variety of visual stimuli – photography, sculpture, painting, and architecture. Of these, architecture has been the most rewarding and stimulating to work with. This is perhaps due to the immersive quality that it shares with music – both arts occupy time and space. This presentation focuses on my solo cello work, For Mies, presented in Mies van der Rohe's Carr Chapel and commissioned for the 2015 Open House Chicago Festival. Approximately seven minutes in duration, the piece was presented at regular intervals over a three-hour period as visitors explored the space. The opportunity arose through my membership of Access Contemporary Music, a Chicago-based organization that have collaborated with Open House Chicago for a number of years, facilitating opportunities for composers to create music for specific spaces. On this occasion, members were invited to submit a proposal outlining how they would create a site-specific composition for one of three buildings. With an avid interest in modernist architecture, I was immediately drawn to Carr Chapel. Mies himself said, There is nothing spectacular about this chapel. It was meant to be simple. Therefore, I had to think hard about what compositional approach to take. I felt an immense sense of duty to do justice to what Mies described as a noble and monumental building. Defending its simplicity, he said, I would not have built the chapel differently if I had had a million dollars to do it. I explored a number of options in order to determine the most appropriate and rewarding approach. As a PhD student, I had studied the work of Greek composer Yanis Zanakis, who, after obtaining a degree in civil engineering, spent 12 years working in the studio of Le Corbusier. Zanakis drew from his knowledge of mathematics and applied certain architectural processes to a musical score. While such an approach interests me, it did not feel appropriate for Carr Chapel. In other site-specific compositions, I have translated various architectural features and profiles into musical lines. Through the manipulation of register, dynamic volume, and sonic momentum, music can give the impression of the depth and volume of a space. The oral thus suggests the visual. For example, the opening of my piece for Craigsbank Church explores the gradated entrance. Here, a solid straight line is set behind an angular line, which leads to the entrance and bell tower. This is translated musically as a single low pitch on the cello, to which a very slow ascending glissando, a continuous sliding movement, is added. The bottom pitch, unchanging, depicts the straight line, while the drawn-out glissando evokes the depth and grandeur of the entrance. This particular method did not feel suitable, given the form of Mises' Car Chapel. Music is a linear art. It takes us on a journey through time and space. In an interview of 1955, in which he details the journey through Frank Lloyd Wright's Taliesin West, 
Philip Johnson draws parallels between linearity in music and architecture. Describing the essence of Taliesin West as the procession through the building, he recalls counting the turns required to reach the core, 45 by his reckoning. He gives a wonderfully detailed description of the journey through the house, declaring that Lloyd Wright is playing with you as you walk through that space. Johnson declares that once you reach the final duel with 14-foot ceilings and an immense fireplace, you realise that you have been handled and padded and twisted, much as a symphony will caress you, or an opera until you get to the crisis. I have explored such musical journeys through space and other works. Translating certain design features into music, my score for Madeleine House navigates its way from the ornate limestone entrance to the grain of the wood on the ground floor and the geometrical pattern stained glass windows. Mises' square design for Carr Chapel, nicknamed the God Box, does not lend itself to such an approach. Given my passion for Mises' work, I viewed this as an opportunity to explore a more profound relationship between music and architecture. I realised that even if the chapel had lent itself to a musical journey, I would not have taken this approach. I wanted to portray in honest terms my admiration for Mises' handling of materials and to create a piece of music that might in turn facilitate a way in for those unfamiliar with or perhaps indifferent to Mises' work. And so I focused on why I admire Mises' work. My appreciation extends beyond his architectural designs. I respect his skill as a craftsman, revealed in his exemplary understanding of materials. With no immediate knowledge of Carr Chapel prior to the event, I was, however, able to draw from first-hand experience of visits to the newer National Gallery, the Barcelona Pavilion, and the Seagram Building. Recalling these experiences, my captivation with his buildings was not solely determined by their scale and design. I was impressed by the beauty and richness of the materials, and in particular their tactile nature. I believe that a visit to one of Mises' buildings demands time and space in order to appreciate the inherent beauty found within the materials. Drawing parallels with this, my score for Carr Chapel establishes a harsh yet contemplative atmosphere, one that creates space and invites the listener to focus on an exploration of textures on the cello. While contemplating the understated elegance of the chapel's interior and the external landscape afforded us through the glass, the music embodies Mises' less is more aesthetic, encouraging the audience to appreciate the intrinsic richness of simplistic and raw musical ideas. The textural approach taken here the music lacks any obvious melodic line, seeks to investigate the tactile quality of Mises' materials. Referring to the analogies between music and architecture, the architect Stephen Hall writes, where music has a materiality in instrumentation and sound, architecture attempts an analogue in space and light. For Mises takes this further and explores a relationship between the materiality of architecture and the materiality of music, in describing his admiration for Mises' colonnade apartments in New Jersey, the British architect Peter Smithson said, It is a wonderfully clear exposition, because the things it is assembled from are humble, of how his handling makes us see their richness. This captures the essence of my compositional approach. For Mises' a clear exposition, the score is not cluttered. Humble musical ideas are given time and space to establish themselves. My approach is intended to encourage the visitor to hear the richness of these humble musical ideas, which seek to complement the rich visual and tactile quality of the chapel's materials. While Fermis mirrors the elegant simplicity of Carr Chapel, it is intended as a wider acknowledgement of Mises' aesthetic and may be presented in any one of his buildings. Indeed, after listening to the piece in the chapel, a small group of tourists expressed that they felt it would also sound beautiful at Farnsworth House. The piece opens with one pitch in the lower register. Warmth and depth is added to the initial quite raw sound through an exploration of different speeds of vibrato, while changes to the dynamics alter the volume. The contemplative tone of the piece is set at the start, the first note being subject to subtle changes of timbre or colour drawing parallels between the beauty of the chapel's humble materials and the beauty of simplistic musical textures.
Peter Smithson talks of Mises' feelings for materials as luxury, whereby the ordinary is raised to a kind of dignity. For Mies contains moments where the focus on a single pitch takes this idea and challenges perceptions on beauty and art. The piece has a limited number of pitches so that the ear is drawn to the contrast in colours and sonorities. In this next extract, again focusing on one solitary pitch, different performance techniques are explored, seeking to draw our attention to the tactility of the Travertin marble altar. The sound undergoes a transformation from a smooth, sustained tone, which, through the use of different instrumental techniques, ends with a certain harshness. The transition from what might be described as warm to cold emphasises the rich, contrasting textures found within the travertine marble. The cracks and flaws do not detract from its beauty, rather they enhance its overall charm. The purity and richness of the chapel's stainless steel cross is explored in the following extract. Described by Mies as a fine, strong and very elegant material, he regarded steel as a clear element, one which can be made rich. The cellist very slowly slides his finger down the length of one string to produce a glissander. The visual gesture of his left hand travelling down the string replicates the vertical steel line of the cross. Touching the string lightly with his finger creates intermittent harmonics, a thin, high, almost flute-like sound. Some of these harmonics ring out clearly, while others sound intentionally murky, unclear and harsh. The nature of the technique means that this gesture will never sound exactly the same twice. Comparisons can be made between this open, indeterminate quality and the steel cross itself, where the reflections and patterns created on the steel are subject to the degree of natural light entering through the glass entrance. Indeed, Mies said he employed glass to achieve a rich interplay of light reflections. In the writings on auditory spatial awareness, Blesser and Salter comment on how steel, glass and other hard materials are often associated with high frequencies since they produce high frequencies when struck. The exploration of harmonics on the cello here bears an affinity with the steel material of the cross. This is one of my favourite moments in the piece. The texture is unapologetically raw, harsh, even brutal and encourages the listener to seek the beauty in such sound worlds. Mies wrote about the liveliness of brick, the richness of this simplest wall surface. In the next extract, a simple, sustained tone on the cello increases in intensity, mirroring the simplicity and strength of brick and its rough tactile quality. In the following extract, the harsh texture of the cellist dropping his bow onto the strings parallels the hard terrazzo floor. The echo-like pattern created from this gesture suggests the rich pattern within the terrazzo material.
The final extract is intended to parallel the use of glass in the chapel. Mies said we should attempt to bring nature, houses, and human beings together into a higher unity. If you view nature through the glass walls, it gains a more profound significance than if viewed from outside. Lightly pressing the string with their finger, the cellist freely slides up and down one string before coming to rest on a clear harmonic. The musical textures are intended to replicate the glass. Raw sounds correspond with the strength of the glass, while purer, clearer harmonics complement its transparency. Here the cellist is free to determine the speed and range of the gestures. Again, this indeterminate approach parallels the use of glass in the chapel. Shadows, reflections and patterns on the steel cross and terrazzo floor are subject to the intensity of light entering through the glass. Stephen Hall writes, If we are to enjoy a sense of delight and architecture, our almost exclusive reliance on visual perception must be replaced by a recognition of the full spectrum of perceptual capacities. The exploration of textures on the cello is intended to complement our visual engagement with the chapel, but also encourages us to consider a relationship between the tactile materiality of architecture and the materiality of music. The response to my music was overwhelmingly positive. The informal nature of the performances broke down the usual barriers between composer, performer and the audience. Here, the freedom to explore the chapel while the performance was taking place enhanced the public's engagement with the space. Inspecting the chapel's materials up close encouraged a closer connection to the corresponding musical textures and provided a different auditory experience as the sound travelled from different distances and directions. Numerous visitors told me that my music encouraged them to spend more time in the chapel. A good number stayed to hear two performances. Initiatives such as Open House create opportunities for new music to reach a wider audience, including those that may not actively seek out performances of classical music. And they stimulate dialogue. Never before had I had such a number of interesting exchanges with an audience. The majority of visitors were keen to talk to me about the piece, and while most did not have a musical knowledge, that did not hinder our conversation. Many used visual gestures to describe moments they had enjoyed. Mies said, I know there are those who may take exception to the chapel, but it was designed for the students and staff at the school. They will understand it. And indeed, the audience understood my music. I'm not a religious person. My ethical imperative was to do justice to the chapel, not as a sacred space, but as a Mies building. At no point did I encounter any negativity towards my music and the harsh, raw textures explored on the cello. Philip Johnson said, The elegance of simplicity always attracted me to Mies. His slogan, less is more, means that you'll get the greatest effects by the simplest means, and that is the highest form of art to him. I hope Mies would have enjoyed my less is more approach. Thank you.